Hey folks, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another shorty. This episode marks my hundredth video on Blip, and to celebrate, I'm going to discuss the disparate nature of anime by using two entirely different shows as examples. You see, what a lot of people don't realise is that animation is a medium, not a genre. It can be used to tell wildly differing stories. From gentle tales of modern life and bygone ages, to heart-pounding epics that span time and space. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's begin with something a little closer to Earth, if not home. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the slice of life anime, Azumanga Daio. Originally aired in Japan in 2002, Azumanga Daio presents us with the everyday happenings of a group of high school girls and their two teachers. But it's also the starting point for surreal strangeness, heart-melting cuteness, and even an epic showdown between an alley cat and a mountain lynx cub. Now, I would present a bio of Azumanga Daio's creator, Kiyohiko Azuma, but my research hasn't actually managed to dig up that much on him. Instead, I present my opinion. And I am definitely putting this one into the house of love. I love this show. It's filled with silly moments, cute moments, and the general pace is thoughtful and considered. It might be a little slow for some people, and if you're expecting gratuitous fan service, you're right out of luck. This, though, only adds to the charm of Azudai, as it's not some exploitative voyeurist fantasy about teenage girls in their most intimate moments. It's a gentle comedy about a group of seemingly mismatched individuals, from tween-age prodigy Chiyo-chan, to every woman Yomi, and the seemingly aloof but secretly animal-loving Sakaki, and the bonds of friendship forged by a shared situation. Indeed. I could use Azumanga Daio as a mirror to my own experiences in the adult world. However, I prefer to look at my life through an entirely different lens. The anime studio, Gainax. Beginning as a small group of friends who animated a homemade introduction for a sci-fi convention, this studio has become a powerhouse of innovation, not to mention controversy, lending its names to such tropes as the Gainax Bounce, or the Gainax Ending, mostly coined from the shockingly low budget of their infamous show Neon Genesis Evangelion running out on them, they have built a reputation for creating some of the most polarising anime series in the entire medium. So when Gainax announced a new robot anime, some quarters of the internet were expecting Ava all over again. What they got, however, well, it defies the vagaries of language. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the time and space bending giant robot anime, Guren Lagan. Originally airing in Japan in 2007, Guren Lagan is the tale of a young boy from an underground village who discovers an ancient robot head and the adventure that follows. It's also in part the story of Kamina, the dynamic hot blooded protagonist archetype, and the struggle of his beloved little brother, Simon, to escape from his shadow. Now, I can't really say too much about the plot of Guren Lagan, because nearly everything after the first couple of episodes is a massive spoiler, and this show really does need to be seen to be disbelieved. What I can do is give you my opinion of it, and I can tell you that I'm definitely putting this one into the house of love. If I had to pick one word to describe Guren Lagan, it would be more. Guren Lagan will always give you more than you bargained for. More hot-blooded action, more incredible giant robots, more ludicrous heroism, more than just a silly techno-fantasy post-apocalyptic waffle, Guren Lagan runs on rule of cool, refuge in audacity, and the power of awesome. More than one critic has complained that the show is monstrously stupid, and there's no denying that it's far from a cerebral examination of the human psyche. But then... Neither were the great giant robot anime shows of the 70s, your classic Mazingas, your Geta Robos, or even from the 80s, Go Lion, the basis for Voltron. They didn't need to be, and neither does Guren Lagan.
Gurren Lagann, the ridiculously awesome reconstruction of giant robot anime and the last great giant robot show I've seen lately. Asamanga Dio, the sweet little comedy about life in a Japanese high school. Two shows as different as night and day, and yet they're both still anime. Which sort of brings me back to my point. Animation is a medium, not a genre. And it needs more love. And I'll try and give it more love in the next hundred episodes. For now though, I've been Funky Monkey, and you've been watching another whole shorty. So long!